What's cooking good looking? Aga. And today we're gonna to cook some Aga. Let's go. One of the most popular methods of growing mushrooms is agar. And with a trusty flow hood at home, you can do it. So today we're gonna to make MEA agar, which pretty much 90% of mushrooms love. It's just a simple recipe of agar, light malt, and a pinch of yeast, and some water. I've got a mason jar here and a sterilizer. We're gonna show you how to cook some agar. Let's get into it. For about 20 agar plates, you need around 500 ml of water and your agar. So I've got one tablespoon. We like to do a, a heaped spoon of agar, a level tablespoon of malt, and a pinch of yeast. We have one of our really old school recap lids. They turned out to be really good for agar. So I'll, I'll do it up pretty tight. And give it a good, good mix. You can use a spoon, knife, fork, whatever. Make sure you mix it up really good. And then loosen the lid, because when you're sterilizing, the steam needs to go get in there. And then we'll cover it with some foil. Make sure it's loose. And in the sterilizer, it's gonna go. So we're also putting in a jar of water with a temperature data logger, just so we can make sure that it's sterilized properly. I'll show you downloading it later, so we can see how our agar cooked in our run. Very important, we monitor all of our cook runs of everything we cook to make sure everything is sterilized properly. That goes in there. Show you. <laughs> Trick with our All American canners is doing a little bit at a time, like a tire. Opposite sides, not going fully tight to start with. Making sure it's level. When you've got it level, I do a little bit at a time. Each opposite ones, just to make sure it goes down flat. When you're warming up your sterilizer, most important thing is having your vent open to warm it up and vent it. We'll check back in shortly when it starts to steam and we're ready to close it. Now we've got like 50, 60 minutes so it warms up. <coughs> now let's do a quick in-between video. One of the most common questions we get asked is, what is agar good for? Well, what's the different colors? Which should I use? Blue agar is just agar and water. That's it. So we do blue, so we know it's just water agar. It's good for cloning wild mushrooms. As there's no nutrients in the agar, things are very, very slow to grow, like really slow. So if you take a little cutting from your mushrooms, the mushrooms have to grow under its own steam. So if you have any other contaminated spores and things or other bits landing on there, it really struggles to grow. So generally, although it takes a long time to grow, your mushroom fungus will get growing and then you can just cut the leading edge and go on to a, a normal agar. So it's really good for cloning and that's about it. There's no food source, so it's not good for much else. Green agar is MEA agar with antibacterial. So if you're having any bacteria crumples, which is sort of bits of slimy stuff, this is good to clean up your cultures you've got. It is slower growing, pretty much everything will grow. Other fungi and things will grow, so if any spores land on there, that's gonna grow too of other funguses, but it's good for helping slow down bacteria and stuff to get your mushroom fungus away from it, then cut it, and then give it some MEA. So only good for cleaning up cultures. You can use it, but things are slower growing, and it's not good over time just using any bacterial. MEA agar is just a standard looking agar. This is essentially for everything, so you can do spores, cloning. You need to be very clean with your cloning, otherwise everything will grow. Everything grows at full speed, so if you have any problems, they generally outcompete your mushrooms, so you need to be very clean using MEA. Having a flow hood is a must, or still air box to minimum, but you will have some issues if any spores land on your work. So MEA is good for general purpose, cloning, spores, everything, transfers from other agar, everything grows. Storage of agar, as soon as you take them out of the bag, anything in your air, if that gets in under the edge of your agar, it's gonna grow. So generally you need to only open them in front of a flow hood or inside of a steel air box. Don't open them, pick them up and oh, look around because things are getting there, then they're stuffed. Sometimes you get some condensation build up. That's due to the fluctuation of the temperature. So if you've got a stable room temperature between 18 to 20 degrees, that will stop any condensation forming inside your plates. It's just from the temperatures going up and down. 
so you get a bit of evaporation. It's not a problem, but people get a bit upset when they see a bit of condensation, but it's just from the temperatures. Only store them at room temperature, between 15 to 20 degrees. Don't put them in the fridge, because fridges are pretty dirty places generally. So if there's any pinholes or anything like that, things will make their way in. Just room temperature, between 15 to 20 degrees, is the best storage place. So while our agar's cooking, what do we need? We're gonna need some gloves, isoprol, empty agar plates, and a flow hood. You can do this in a still air box, but it's much harder to work, and a lot of people have trouble isoprol everything down. If you need kind of flame near that. Most people that buy flow hoods off us get back to us and be like, I don't know how I live without one. Now the most important bit of equipment, and you only need something this small, and you can do all the tricky work of mushroom growing. One thing you don't do with your agar plates is, oh wow, look at that, oh, contaminated. Oh, that feels cool, contaminated. I wonder, wonder what, uh, <coughs> oh yeah, it's fucked. <coughs> All right, it's been about 30 minutes and our sterilizer is just starting to kiss some air out. One of the most important things is when it starts letting some steam out, you don't shut it yet, you wanna make sure you've got a good, steady, of steam coming out so it takes about 15 to 20 minutes of venting before we actually shut it we'll check back in about 15 minutes and see how it's steaming 15 minutes later so it's been hissing for at least 15 to 17 minutes so let's give give everything inside a chance to all warm up to that 100 degrees and then all you do is now it's closed and we'll start building pressure. We've got the dial set on 8.2, which gives us about 18 PSI, where it automatically will get to pressure, then turn on and off and hold its temperature. Once it gets to pressure, we'll start time for 45 minutes. And then after 45 minutes, we'll just turn the power off and let it cool down slowly on its own. And it'll depressurize very slowly as it's cooling down. You don't want to let the steam out or anything like that for agar because it boils over if it's too quick. So it needs to be a gradual cool down. Once it's back down to zero PSI, we'll spray the lid down at ISO, open it up and put the jar in front of the flow hood to cool down to pouring temperature. We'll check back in shortly. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes. I really don't like you, bossy bastard. Later. Now see, to get to a high temperature, it needs to be under pressure. So that's why you have to pressure cook and that's why your oven doesn't work. We get all the time people go, can I just cook it in my oven at 150 degrees and it's gonna be fine. It needs the pressure so the steam pushes the heat into the grains or material. So you wanna get things over 121 degrees for a minimum of 15 minutes to destroy any bad bacteria, anything, mold spores, bacteria spores. Yeah. and then kill that bacteria. So our agar has been cooking at around 17 PSI for 45 minutes. We've just turned it off. We're gonna turn on our flow hood so it has time to run for a good half an hour, 45 minutes while the pressure cooker cools down on its own. And that will help filter all the air in the room of any spores flying around and make it a bit cleaner while we unload and put into our sterile airflow. So one thing I wanna do just before you work is give the bench a good spray and wipe down with isoprol. Don't spray the filter directly, but you can spray the walls around and... Just to make sure your area is nice and clean, you wanna give it a good spray with isoprol around the rim. Because if there's any vacuum, it will suck in, so you want it to be as clean as possible. People do also have a isoprol soaked rag, just to make sure in case it sucks anything in, so... Now it is hot, so be careful. So the isoprol soaked a bit of paper towel just because the jar will be hot so I'll pick it up with this. Make sure you put it straight into your sterile airflow and also your lid is loose so just nip it up just so it's tight and then just for overflow so. I always give it a spray with isoprol just to be extra cautious in case anything is landed on it. Just leave that to start cooling down in front of your airflow. While that cools, we'll get our empty agar plates ready. Now make sure you give them a really good spray and make sure they're in your sterile airflow. Every now and then give your agar a bit of a swell just to keep the agar well mixed. All right. So everything's got a good isoprol. Make sure you drain your hands and everything. Then general rule of thumb, 
you keep your hands in here, that should stay clean. If you do reach out to scratch your bum or whatever, you need to re-isoprol them. Always working from the back, try and never reach around. So you want to keep your agar nice and mixed. And that's just a matter of waiting until it's cool enough to pour, but obviously it hasn't started to set. When it gets to around a sort of 55 degrees, 60 degree mark, you want to pour your agar place before it turns back to jelly. We'll keep giving it a mix up every so often, and when it's cool enough, then I'll start pouring. So when, when it's cool enough to pour, always working from the side. Oh man. <laughs> We'd have a little bit left over, that's fine. And we'll just leave those to cool and set solid. Once they're cooled and set, we'll put them in some Ziploc bags to keep them in a sealed bag for when we need to use them. Let's check back in when they're cooled down. A few inches later. And they're all set, so what we're gonna do is, because we're not ready to use them, generally if you use them straight away, that's the best thing to do. Otherwise, keep them somewhere sterile to, to use them. One of the easiest, cheapest, storage methods, sandwich size Ziploc bags. They're food grade and clean, so they should be fine. We'll put two to four plates per bag. So always open towards the filter. My hands obviously are already sterile because I sprayed them. And then just carefully. Four at a time. Don't critique my technique, it is a bit sloppy in this little setup. All right. So now they're safely sealed in the bags, we can set them aside for using later. I have kept one out. So one thing people complain about with MEA plates, you can see in the bottom, there's a bit of caramelised malt, so little speckles. It's not actually contamination, it's just caramelised malt from when you go above 121 degrees. You do get this sort of speckled thing do come up, which is fine, it's nothing bad, it's just a bit of caramelised malt. We will sacrifice this one. This would contaminate being out here, but yeah, it's gone all hard jelly. The longer you let them sit in front of your flow hood, the condensation and moisture will disappear. That's how you make agar plates. Oh my god, the noise. So we'll download our diddly data. Yeah, look all the small egg uh, run. There we are. So clearly that said it was cold during the day. When we come over here where we've done our run. So this is obviously when it went in. They started ramping up. Through here we had a venting. It was ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. Then up around here somewhere is where we actually shut it and then it ramped up to its temperature. You can see here, it was 20 minutes here, it was the peak. It was 122 degrees. It was about, yeah, 20, 25, 20, 24 minutes. So you need that extra time to make sure everything gets to temperature. And you can see it slowly cooled down until we opened it and pulled it out of the water. But yeah, it takes a minimum of 15 minutes over 121 degrees to kill everything. And this shows that we did, so happy days. We don't have to bin it and try again. As a wise man once said over in America, if you ain't probing, you ain't knowing. As humans, we don't like being probed, but <laughs> in the name of science, you need to probe. You gotta know what you're cooking, otherwise you got no idea what you're doing. 
tips for pouring your own agar plates. Make sure the container you use to cook your agar in can be pressure cooked and won't melt or anything like that. Glass is generally the best option, but also make sure the glass can withstand heat. Always run your flow hood for 30 to 40 minutes before you start working, just as this will help clear your room of any airborne particles that may be flying around and land in your work. Always clean your work area thoroughly with isoprol before you start working, and also clean any tools or anything you may use in your workspace with isoprol as well. Always let your pressure canner cool down slowly. Do not vent the steam as this will cause your agar to boil over. Always be careful unloading your agar from your canner as it will be very hot and you don't want to burn yourself. Wait for your agar to cool down to around 50 to 55 degrees before you pour it. This will help prevent excess condensation. The cooler you pour it, the less condensation you'll get, but you have to find the sweet spot of where it's not going to start turning back into jelly while you're pouring. Always store agar plates at room temperature, somewhere cool and dry, around 18 to 20 degrees, in a sealed bag. Ziploc sandwich bags are a great way to store unused agar plates in smaller quantities, so you're not opening them every time you use a couple. Do not store uncolonized agar plates in the fridge, as this may cause the agar to reliquify. And that's it, be sure to check Check out agar transfer video which we show how to do agar transfers enjoy have fun see you next time have either day yeah thanks for watching if there's anything else you want to learn drop us a comment down below don't forget to smash that bell subscribe to our channel and we'll see you later and don't forget to smash that bell over there or is it over there is it there there where's that bell